I will report this bill without amendment. Uh, members, we now come to the uh, telecommunications new regulations framework amendment bill. Um, the question is that part one stand part. Mr Chair. Um, I call Melissa Lee. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. I apologise for uh, being a little bit slow on my feet. I was trying to grapple with the, uh, the new supplementary or the paper that I've just um, discovered, uh, which was released today. Um, so it's a great pleasure to uh, participate in the uh, committee stages of this bill. I, I do um, actually uh, would like to note that majority, I think it's actually all of the parties in this House agree on this bill. And I think if I remember back to the first reading stages, I think everybody was actually very keen to get this going. And throughout the select committee process, I think you know we work very um, cordially and um, uh, work very well together. Having said that, I just noticed there are a couple of uh, points that I actually wanted to raise in the uh, committee stages um, um, on certain parts of the bill, but I, I noticed that some parts of it have been changed in the SOP that has been produced by the Minister, so I'll obviously have to look at the impact that that actually have um, on what I was actually going to say. So this um, telecommunications new regulatory framework amendment bill basically establishes um, uh, a framework in which um, fiber fixed line access services are provided in New Zealand. And also um, the very idea that the old copper network can actually be removed um, um, in terms um, you know, when, when the time comes and how fiber, where, where, where fiber is actually provided to a certain premises that we are in fact looking at removing the copper line, copper fixed line access services. Also, it's actually about streamlining um, the regulatory processes to um, uh, enable rapid response to any competition problems, particularly in the mobile uh, telecommunications um, a marketplace. And more and more, when we actually look at the work that the previous national government has actually delivered for New Zealanders, and which this particular government has actually, this uh, Labour-led government has actually carried on, if we looked at the time frame of, you know, maybe 2022, I think we were looking at, um, you know, 87% uh, of New Zealand uh, will, will have ultra-fast broadband, uh, or they are at least able to connect. This, um, I'd like to first of all talk on part one um, of, of the bill, and I was going to talk particularly on clause four and have some questions for uh, the minister um, in relation to um, where the uh, clause actually creates or amends changes uh, a number of definitions for use within the uh, telecommunications regulatory environment. And this actually comes about, um, well, this has actually come about after the fact of the select committee uh, process where the definition in the legislation, and I will actually uh, quote on part, um, part one section, um, um, well, actually clause four where it says section five amended. It's the interpretation in terms of the fibre network where the fiber network means the fiber to the premises access network as defined in section 156 AB that connects the user's um, interface. Um, and I'll just cut to the point where it actually talks about access point. And I'm guessing the SOP actually deals with uh, the changes and we probably have to uh, talk about that. But the concern that was actually raised um, with me after the select committee process uh, was actually by some of the concern uh, local fibre companies, LFCs, who actually felt that the consultation process um, in regards to uh, using the terminology access point actually gives uh, them an extra uh, obligation um, under this new, uh, this, this bill, uh, which they believe that uh, the process, they weren't consulted on in terms of using that terminology access point and what by select committee adding that words um, access point um, makes them, um, I, I guess, you know, I, I, what they're saying is that the, the, their obligation to the Crown doesn't necessarily change uh, in terms of the bill uh, for the contract that they have with the Crown. But the, the, regi the regulatory regime um, as set up in the 2011 
uh, relative to the contractual scope that the Crown may have been changed as a result of, uh, of putting um, access point um, um, into um, this bill. And so I would like to actually ask the question of the minister, why did the minister decide to include the phrase access point within the definition of the fibre network? Well, it, actually, it came about as a result of select committee, but I guess, pardon me? Is the member seeking a further call? Yes. And, uh, and, Melissa and, Lee. Thank you, um, um, Mr. Chair. And, and so we did actually take advice, but the thing is that you know the access point. I, I don't remember it being a major part of the select committee process. I think you know the discussions that we've actually had during the select committee process wasn't actually about the access point issue. It was more about uh, the anchor products. And also the line of business issue was probably more prominent than this particular issue that was actually raised after the select committee process. So the, the question that I'd like to ask the minister and the chair, um, and um, maybe this particular minister in the chair may not be able to answer, but I would like to get an answer from the, um, the minister, is why did the minister decide to keep on with the access point within the definition of fibre network in the legislation after the LFCs had actually raised their concern with the minister after the fact. And the other issue is that what advice did the minister receive from the submitters and stakeholders regarding whether the change in the definition of fibre network is actually fit for purpose for those local fibre contract um, with, with the uh, LFCs, you know, our contractors who are feeling rather um, nervous about their contract and their business because they feel that the, the very word we may actually, you know, lay people who don't really know much about this might actually think, what does it matter if you put an access point into that um, select committee, uh, the definition of what fiber network means. And what it literally means is that it actually changes the obligation they feel. And so um, it would be very good if the minister could actually answer that. Perhaps he could actually get some advice from the officials who are here. And does the minister believe that um, the government um, has satisfied the concerns of the local fibre contractors in relation to the change in Clause 4 definition of this particular bit, as, as I've actually raised. Because when they raised it with me, and um, they were obviously very concerned that um, their business model might have to change as a result of this bill going through, and they are hoping that perhaps I could bring you know, an SOP uh, to, to the House. And my reaction to them was that if I do not have, if, if National Party does not actually have the support of other parties in the House, it is actually a futile exercise. And so uh, I know for a fact that they have contacted the Minister and they've had meetings with the Minister in relation to this particular uh, issue. Um, the other issue is that when, um, I guess it's to allay their concern, it's to actually reduce their um, um, concern that the consultation pro process they feel was a little bit flawed in that when, when their business um, is impacted by uh, a, a particular word or a particular clause in a, a piece of legislation that's going to have a major impact on their business, obviously they have right to feel uh, concerned and they have the right to actually raise this issue. Um, so there are many um, aspects of, the, of this bill which you know, are very, very technical, and we have actually worked through them. And uh, as I said right from the beginning, that the majority of the uh, parties actually agree. Uh, but we, before we actually move on to the um, next um, um, you know, uh, clauses, I guess this, this is, I'm raising the fact that this is a particular concern to those LFCs, and I think we we actually uh, probably owe them an explanation, or at least allay their fear to actually make sure that their uh, concerns uh, can be reduced. That there are no longer there isn't actually a major uh, uh, issue uh, with this particular word being um, in this. And I guess the reason why I actually raise this concern with the minister is because uh, I have also asked this question through the uh, parliamentary written question process. I'm sorry to interrupt the member, but it has come time for me to report progress.
Chairman. Uh, Madam Speaker, the committee has considered the Commerce Amendment Bill and reports it with amendment. The committee has also considered the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, CPTPP Amendment Bill and reports it without amendment. The committee has considered the Telecommunications New Regulatory Framework Amendment Bill and reports progress. The committee reports no progress on the Courts Matters Bill and the Tribunal's Powers and Procedures Legislation Bill. Madam Speaker, I move that the report be adopted. The question is that the report be adopted. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. The Commerce, just in a minute. <laughs> the Commerce Amendment Bill, the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, CP, TPP Amendment Bill, are set down for third reading next sitting day. The Telecommunications New Regulatory Framework Amendment Bill, the Courts Matters Bill, and the Tribunal's Powers and Procedures Legislation Bill are set down for further consideration in committee next sitting day. I call point of order the Honourable Carmel Sipilani. I seek leave to make a personal explanation. I have reviewed uh, oh, the transcript.